Welcome to The Writer Reads The Strays of Luna 1, Book 1 The Unwilling, Chapter 14, Revelation. The farmhouse wouldn't take them. You're too hot now, they told Oliver, but there's a cottage that hires out by remote. You can book there. Do it under one name unless folk are going to think about taking a peek. Oliver ducked his head. Thank you, he told them, and offered one of the small denomination cred sticks they carried. The farmer's wife took his hand in both hers and folded his fingers around the stick. You're going to need every credit you can carry, she told him, and we've already been compensated. There's an internet cafe in the village. It has a nice back door, too. They'd taken her advice and headed for town. It was midday, and Lewis looked hungry again. Come on, Bobby, Oliver said. Let's get you fed, and then you've got a call to make. Lewis regarded him with wide eyes. Are you sure? I mean, d don't you want to make sure we've got somewhere to run first? Oliver shook his head. Right now, we've got enough distance we should have a head start on the Juster cars. And you know enough tech to keep them guessing as to the source, right? Lewis nodded. Yes, thanks. I, I hadn't thought of that. You caught me by surprise. Just treat it like an op and we should get out of there alive. If she wants you back... I'll contact Flory for you. Lewis gave him an anxious look. But you won't stay? I mean, you were trying to save me. You shouldn't be punished for that. Oliver gave him a crooked smile. The Justicars don't see it that way. The road remained empty until they reached town, and even then there weren't many vehicles. Oliver and Lewis wandered into the road behind the main stretch of stores and found their way into the back of the internet cafe. They were met by a brisk young woman wearing an apron. Ma Jansen send you, she demanded, one hand on her hip, and Oliver stared. We were the, the farmer's wife, he pointed vaguely in the direction of the farm. Lewis laid a hand on his friend's arm. She didn't give a name, just said the internet cafe had a nice back door and we could book a holiday cottage from here. The woman relaxed, but her brown eyes still assessed them. It didn't take her long to come to a decision and step clear of the door. We've got booths, she told them, and I do a mean shake and a steak. She laughed at their surprise. Where do you think the place gets the right to call itself a cafe, she asked. Locals wouldn't tolerate it being called that if I couldn't at least sling a steak burger when it's needed. Or s steak and chips, Lewis asked wistfully, and she laughed again. With or without gravy? With, and, he flicked an anxious glance at Oliver, C can we make mine a double serve? Sure thing, the girl said. Now why don't you come in? You're making my back porch look untidy. They went in and she followed them. Booths are to your left, she called, or you can take the back room to your right. They looked at each other and took the booth closest to the back door. If the woman thought they were being too cautious, she didn't say. How do you have your steaks, she asked, and how many do you want? Two, Oliver asked and looked at Lewis. Four for him. Four? He eats a lot more than I do, Oliver explained. It's a phase. A phase, huh? The hand was back on her hip, and her eyes turned speculative. Finally, she shrugged and headed for the kitchen. Did you want to shake while you wait? Just juice, Oliver told her. Or beer? Her laugh floated back. Apple, kawari, or limestone, she asked. The pub would have my hide if I sold beer. Two limestone, then, Oliver told her. I'd hate to get you in trouble with the pub. Be right with you, she promised, as the door at the front of the cafe jangled. Oliver glanced at Lewis, but his beater shrugged, and they slid into the bench seats on the booth. The booth held two terminals, and was designed for the customers to sit facing each other. There was even enough room for food and drink, away from the box and keyboard. Oliver was almost impressed. You need help with the setup? he asked, when Lewis just sat and stared at the screen. His friend shook his head. No, I just... He gave Oliver a pleading look. I just don't know how she'll take it. Oliver did his best to keep his thoughts from his face. He had a fair idea exactly how Emmy was going to take it. And he didn't envy Lewis the ordeal he was about to put himself through. All he could hope was that he could help the man pick up the pieces. Emmy's people were radical humanists, and Emmy had been turned young. Chances were he and Lewis were going to have to make a quick escape once this call was done. As Lewis went through his setup, Oliver began searching for a way off the planet, or at least out of the area they were in. 
The results were discouraging. Flory had given them the best of a limited number of outbound ships, and they'd ended up on an edge world, a long way from anywhere. Taking a breath, he started familiarising with the local area. If they had to run... The woman returned with their drinks, setting them on the tray at the end of the table. Steak will be another twenty minutes, she told them. I'm assuming medium rare. Oliver gave her a grateful smile. Thank you, uh, miss. Just call me Wendy, she told him. Everyone else does. Wendy, then. Thank you. She nodded in acceptance and bustled away. Oliver heard her chatting to another of their customers, even though he couldn't make out the words. Neither of them sounded like they were trying to be difficult to understand. Feeling mildly uneasy, he turned back to his screen and pulled up a map of the local area. As he did, Lewis began to speak. Hey, Ams. As he did so, he passed over a second earpiece, indicating he wanted Oliver to listen in. Frowning, Oliver took it and put it in his ear. In front of him, his screen flickered and Amelia appeared before him. Oliver gave Lewis a startled glance. He hadn't known his friend was going to have him observe the conversation. At least, he thought he was observing and not a part of it. A quick glance at the camera monitor showed him he wasn't live, and neither was his mic. Oliver breathed a silent sigh of relief, just as Amelia's voice brought his focus back to the screen. Lewis? The young woman's face crinkled in relief. Her brown eyes worried even as they flicked away from the screen. Lewis? she repeated. Is that you? Oliver's face mirrored Lewis's frown, even as the changeling leaned forward to reassure her. Yeah, baby, it's me. I'm... Where are you? she demanded, cutting him off. Are you okay? When you didn't come home, and then when Charlotte said you'd resigned, I couldn't... Again, her eyes flicked to someone off screen, and Oliver waited for Lewis to pull the plug. He shifted uneasily in his seat when his friend didn't. Amelia's voice softened. I've been so worried, babe. Babe. It made Oliver shudder. Girls were babes. Lewis? Not so much. His friend reached out and touched the screen. I'm fine, baby, but... He paused, swallowed hard, and fixed her with a determined look. His voice grated when he continued, and Oliver watched Emmy lean toward the screen, her expression full of concern. Mostly. Oblivious to the subtleties on his girlfriend's face, Lewis stumbled on. The last operation went bad, sweetheart, and I got shot. Emmy's face mirrored shock, but Oliver snuffed the air, as though the communication system could carry her scent, or the scent of whoever else was in the room. He only wished it could. The first person to invent that capability was going to make a fortune. As it was, all he could do was go by instinct, and every single instinct he had was telling him to pull the plug and run, lost stakes or no. But you're all right now, right, babe? Emmy asked. You're all healed up and you're coming back? Her voice trembled convincingly, but again her eyes flicked to somewhere, or someone, off screen, and her lips curled at the edges. Satisfaction? Oliver shot a quick glance at Lewis, but his friend didn't acknowledge his presence. He kept his eyes on the screen, maintaining operational integrity. Well, at least he wasn't too far gone to remember some things. Not exactly, Lewis told her, and her brow furrowed. Lewis, honey, what aren't you telling me? I nearly died, babe, Lewis admitted, hurrying on. And if Oliver hadn't bitten me, I would have died. Her face crumpled. But Oliver's a wolf, she said, her eyes darting to the side, the hurt and tears in them almost genuine. She swallowed and licked her lips, lifting shimmering eyes to the screen. Does, does that mean you're... Did you, did you get infected too? Lewis's face twisted and he glanced away from the screen, ducking his head as he fought to get his emotions under control before lifting it again and looking her directly in the eye. Yes, it's what happens. Their, our saliva is a mutagen, you know that. Oh, Lewis, how could you? Emmy exclaimed, and Oliver couldn't tell if she was victorious, disappointed, angry, or saddened. At least some of that emotion had to be real. I, Oliver didn't have any choice, Lewis told her. It was the only way he could stop me from dying. 
What? He's never heard of a regen tank? She snapped, picking up a tissue and dabbing at her eyes. He tried to get me to one, but I, he just... Lewis's voice softened. We were too far away. He didn't have a first aid kit? Amy clearly didn't believe the bite had been the only option. He used it, but there wasn't anything in it that could help me. Lewis paused and rolled his eyes toward the ceiling, fighting back tears as he did. I got shot bad, baby. Amy pursed her lips and narrowed her eyes. If you were hurt that bad, babe, how could you even say yes? And for that matter, why would you? I thought we talked about this. Oliver froze, shocked at the sheer cold-bloodedness of her words, shocked even more that she'd put it together so fast. And while he'd expected that Lewis had intended to tell her, his friend had avoided saying he hadn't given permission. I didn't say yes, Lewis admitted, and Oliver saw the effort it took his friend not to look over the computer at him. Amy saw it too. Fortunately, she interpreted it as Lewis being upset. Oh, babe, I'm sorry. I know how you feel about that. The way she said it, you'd have thought becoming a werewolf instead of dying an untimely death was the worst fate in the world. Then again, Oliver had heard how her people talked about wares. He guessed from her perspective it probably was. I know you know, babe, and I knew you'd want to know I didn't do it on purpose, and Oliver watched Lewis gather his courage and cross his fingers on his friend's behalf. He might not like Emmy or her people's beliefs, but he wanted his friend to be happy, and if the girl truly loved him... And what, babe? The sugar coating to her curiosity made Oliver lift his head. It was almost like she was enticing Lewis, leading him on. But for what purpose? Well, I was wondering just how much you loved me, Lewis finally admitted, his eyes full of pleading. What do you... Amy paused. As in, do I still love you even though... She swallowed hard and her lips curled with distaste. Lewis nodded and Oliver pitied the man. On screen, Amy cocked her head. You want to show me your wolf? She asked, the upward lilt of disbelief matching her face despite her glancing off screen. Definitely to the left, Oliver thought, and definitely more than one of them. He wanted to warn his friend, perhaps nudge him with the toe of his boot, but he owed Lewis this much, one call to know how his girlfriend really felt about him. One call to say goodbye.